Yo, you are live. I know. I was waiting for you to make the announcement. I appreciate it. So we got an awesome show today. Quick special thanks to everyone in the studio. I want to thank Kvar. I have to thank Q and Marcy especially for running around and doing everything. And we're going to give a special thanks to Woey. Woey went and picked up the food from Jesse Ray's. So big thanks to Jesse Ray's. What thank, what what? thank you, Woey. So I uh, want to thank everyone. Make sure you head over to KVAR.com. Make sure you purchase some freedom at KVAR.com. We got an awesome show today. Uh, I'm not over-caffeinated today. I'm feeling just about right. I know Q is over-caffeinated because he was completely bamboozled by the power of Strike Force Energy the other day. So big thanks to Strike Force Energy for sending us tons of uh, these little concentrated packets. And Q thought he was slick because some of the concentration fell on his hand and he licked it and he was awake for three days. So... This is an awesome show. I have uh, a really, uh, I'll say, close mutual friend of mine. Uh, you know, we've hung out, not a lot, uh, but just enough, and we trained together, and we were a member of some of the same gyms. But uh, probably one of the obviously cooler chicks, and I only have the cool ones on the show, that hang around the gym and, and, and are involved with the UFC and participate. And we share a really close mutual friend, which is funny, which I just figured out kind of in the last 24 hours. So I'm really excited to hear her story. She's from Alaska. We know she's pro 2A. We know she's pro fighting for sure. And uh, she loves to throw down. We got the one and only Gina Mizani. So this is this is awesome. So I'm, you know, almost more excited about this one than almost any other female fighter we've had in, because you're really unique in in that you come across as super energetic you don't hold anything back you have a lot of fire in your belly when you're on the mat everybody knows you're there and even when you walk in here you have an energy about you how did you get to this point how did you get involved with ufc from alaska and where does all this energy come from well it comes straight from my belly um <laughs> no uh born and raised in alaska i started training up there and um because as a lot of people know it's snowy most of the time there and I spent a lot of time just training my butt off and then moved to Seattle to get a degree in graph design, pursued that, realized I still want to punch people in the face for money, um, packed up my car, sold all my stuff in my house and got rid of all my cool adult benefits and, you know, started working at a bar in Vegas and then eventually got the call to, for, to fight in the UFC. It, it's kind of crazy, right? But serendipitous at the same time. At the same time, because you're working, and then you get this this opportunity with the UFC. But it, it takes a lot of courage to kind of drop everything you're doing. And being in Seattle and Alaska, those aren't two places that you know you wake up and the sun's just shining on your face and everything oh, feels God. good. Because I lived in Montana, so I know so what it's understand. like to be in the in the, the the cold and the miserableness. And I lived in the most miserable place in the universe in Boston, so uh, everybody hates each other there. So it's... It's it's, it's a, really a thing. Like when people yeah. say they have a big bad attitude in Seattle, I'm like it's... I mean, not trying to down on it, no, but it's... Them. But I mean, it's like when it's sunny out, it's kind of it's a lot more motivating to do stuff and get out of bed. And you got shot out of a cannon with the UFC. You had a lot of success in the beginning and you were kind of thrust into it right away. How how did that, you know, how did that feel going from kind of, you know, like you said, bartending to now you're kind of thrust in the fight mix and you're writing mid cards almost almost out of the gate. Really? I, well, my first fight was I got called on a 16 days notice to fight Sarah McMahon, which at the time she was ranked number seven in the world. Right. And she's a. a medalist a, a wrestling olympian mm. um and i had to cut 27 pounds and uh misha tate called me and said gina do you want this fight and i was like hell yeah and so i immediately hopped on the treadmill <laughs> started eating tilapia and broccoli when i could and um i got i came in overweight uh, about a pound and a half um and I fought her, and I was it, it was it was a terrible weight cut. It was all, but it was it was what I had to do to get in the door. When you come in a pound and a half over, they give you a little time to lose that pound and a half, or are you okay? Or I what, just, does it become catch weight or what? I genuinely just stopped sweating. Like I I woke up the next day, I was had a little bit more. Actually, I had a pound. I think I had two pounds to go, and I was in the sauna for a good like three hours maybe, and I just stopped sweating. Q, 20, I tried everything. Twenty seven pounds. You couldn't lose. You couldn't lose twenty seven ounces. <laughs> Not with the donut. <laughs> not with the donut. What not donut? With, the one on your the, shirt? Not with the... Oh. So oh. when we walked... In, uh, I'm going to say it. Burn. <laughs> when we walked in the studio, right, Gina, first minute she meets Q. This is what I mean about taking over the room. Some chicks just have this ability and some don't. She looks at Q and she's like, you get some pink on your shirt. 
you got some donut there. Why don't you clean that up? <laughs> and he's like, ah, oh, oh. you know, it was like, the I thought ultimate. it was a pickup line. That, yeah. And then, was, then I realized it was a throwdown line. It was. <laughs> Is that a donut in your shirt or are you going to oh, share? Just happy to see me. Seriously. <laughs> happy to see me. So did you notice the UFC dolls too, by the way, before I get back? Yeah. To, so I went to that UFC, like everything's free sale. Like they're like, you know what I mean? Like where like the crazy chain smoking Asians are outside buying Hell everything. Yeah. So I go, I go to this deal and these dolls were like a dollar a piece. And I was like, I have to get these dolls. Like they're just like cool little. They all have a disease though. Little figurines. They all have no acetal. No acetal. Yeah, look at them. Oh, sorry, guys. I made him kiss. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to show their butts. Or when what? they do those no sales butts. of the UFC, it's hilarious. Just on a side note, you go there, and there's people literally like filling their trunk to sell the stuff at flea markets. And we were talking about this. like We, we think the stuff's like all fake at flea markets. Like, oh, it's got to be like fake stuff. But they were buying like the legit stuff, like the boxing gloves. There's like 9,000 million pairs. And AG goes there, and he's like, he's like making a – you know, he's buying like a whole wardrobe. The whole UFC wardrobe. It was hilarious. So another quick point that I have to point out is our mutual friend, Kat Zingano, who's awesome. And Great I've been, kid. yeah, I've been chatting with quite a bit lately and picking her brain on a few things. She spoke very highly of you. And what I've noticed is when I asked around about you, everybody speaks very highly of you and you have a high That's energy. So nice. Yeah, no, it's 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 true. And where do you how do you keep that upbeat nature being you're from the frozen tundra, and I would imagine it's hard to stay excited for whatever it is you're doing, anything that's going on. Because I lived in Montana. It's pitch black like 20 hours a day. Right. So how do you come here and you're just like, you're always smiling. You're always happy. How do you do that in the fight game and, and keep that, that type of composure? Man, like life is hard as it is, and there's like enough crap going on in the world to ruin anyone's day. Um, and if I can like make one person smile or laugh or – you know, feel upbeat about something, I'm totally down to do that. Um, I guess maybe my first life I should have been a clown or something, but um, especially in the fight world, it's really hard to keep a positive, upbeat, moving forward attitude because, you know, you win a fight, you take one step forward, you lose a fight, you take five steps back. That's just kind of is what it is. Um, but at the same time, I'm super grateful I get to do what I love to do every day. And like some days I don't want to go to work, but I know that it's a a goal I want to reach and, you know, do the best at, but hell, I've worked a nine to five job and I, I didn't love that. I'm super grateful. I just get to train all the time. That's, and my, and you know, my, everyone around me trains and that's like the, I'm, I'm living my dream. And I, and I was talking to coach about that the other day and he said actually something really, I want to pick your brain on. He, he said, a lot of people can make a career out of the fight game. They don't have to be champions, and they can make a great little career out of the fight game. It depends how much they capitalize on their opportunities and how well they do. Do you feel like that's the case, or do you feel like you have to be the best of the best, or can you? do you feel like you're kind of playing the long game? Because I, th I think you can stick around doing it for a while. You have the right attitude. You don't approach it with a miserableness. You enjoy training. You're always, anytime I walk in the gym, which... Uh, you know, you're always there training. Do you feel like you're playing the long game a little bit in a sense and you want to just kind of not go to work, like you said? I mean, honestly, like, I'm always training. I'm always ready in the position that I'm in right now with the UFC and other fight promotions. It's like I'm an open agent and I, I'm i hoping to get a fight. If I got a fight to fight in two, three weeks, I would take it I'm and I'm ready for that. Um, as for, like, a long run type thing, there is more I would like to do with the MMA career. I mean, obviously, ideally, I would love to be the champion and that's always still my goal, and my goal always stays the same no matter what obstacle comes in front. Um, but, like, I know sometimes, like, you know, shit happens. Like, you can't always... Um, you hope for the best, you prepare for, for the worst. Yeah, for always. sure. And make the best of any situation. Like, like my last fight, I just I was doing good, and everything was great, and then I got caught, and that shit happens. And It happens know, all the time. And you can't, you know... E even Tim had a rough rub, that, that last Ugh. one. Um, I was talking about that with Coach, and, and, you know, everyone speaks highly of Tim, and, and he had kind of a, a, a you know, got caught, just a quick thing, and it's, it's you got to move on. you got to pick up the pieces. It's how quick you turn the page that's going to define you. Now, of course, the UFC wants to see everybody be like studs and this and that and all this stuff, but do you feel like um, you are a little more strategic in your approach to how you handle your fight career? You're not just not trying to be a rocket ship and take any match or take anything that comes your way. Do you feel like you're being a little bit more methodical in your choices now? Because you were so you were successful right out of the gate, and now you're kind of saying, you know, what's the next step? Where do I go from here? What's Where does this take me? 
you have to kind of think it through and you this is where you start to figure out if it's a career and right. where you're gonna go with it well i mean honestly i to to this day i still haven't said no to a fight every fight i've been offered i've said yes to so um maybe that was my mistake in taking like tough opponents on short notice time but like i don't know i did it and here right. i am but i don't know there honestly i have a lot of other other ideas i want to be i want to pursue and like some that aren't even fight related but um one thing specifically i want to work on more is a uh, kind of gear my a lot i mean I'm a, <laughs> my what would you call it my my ta my talent Your my talent. my fighting talent um gear it towards women like my age or like around here just to be safe and not have to worry about you know I, I dare someone to grab me on the street like in the sense that yeah it's it, the self-defense component kicks in and it's like yeah you, you start wishing a wishing a motherfucker would right Q? yeah you and because just because like especially i don't know i feel like lately there's been a lot of terrible things like walt harris's daughter absolutely broke my heart and i, I hate that that happened to them and their family and and I, I just don't ever want that to happen and that's one thing i would love to share is is how to defend yourself and how to to feel safe on the i think that's just that such was insane uh, that was, was what georgia uh i think it was uh, alabama i don't remember i think it was alabama q walt harris's daughter she got kidnapped that anaya it was awful yeah, that was alabama was she kidnapped or just was it i think she yeah. was kidnapped she was going to the gas station to literally buy a bag of chips and it was like a, this always happens this way it was like a mile from her house it was something crazy and yeah, it, was, uh, uh, it, was it just it made me sick. So like, far, it's like three people involved. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Do they know who it is yet? They caught two yeah. of the yeah, guys. Got, uh, three. Three, three of them. All three. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I, it's it, it's there, and the thing that sucks is like there's still he'll never get her back. Never That's get her back. Yeah. yeah, he'll never get her back. And, and that was his stepdaughter, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. It was his stepdaughter, and he's fighting. Isn't he fighting soon? He was supposed to be fighting. He pulled out, which I hundred uh, oh, understandably yeah, I so. Like there's no way. Ugh. I don't think anyone will fault him for but that. But honestly, I, and that's something I've wanted to do, but like having that happen uh, lit a fire into my ass a little bit more where I want to start somehow. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to start, but like I was like thinking about all the girls that work in Vegas and gorgeous girls that are, you know, 100 pounds. I work at the clubs. Like, they, you know, what are they going to do? Why don't you start a them? woman's program? That's what I was thinking about doing. But like, well, any co listen. Yeah, exactly. Marcy's volunteered. To, so, like, like Marcy's at Syndicate. She's talked about doing it. And even Casey's like, I'd love to have a woman come in. And, you know, any yeah. of these coaches, you know, I mean, Casey would be one of the best places to do it with because he understands what Abigail. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, extreme is extreme. And it'd be great to do one there. It's just getting the mat time would be the right. hard part of extreme. But, like, putting in a woman's program, I mean, I think that's a no brainer. And I think you'd make a great coach. But I, I'd, I don't, what's amazing is here. So, so when I lived in Montana, I, I actually, um, I dated a black belt and she ran the women's program. So, um, you know, <laughs> It's crazy because I haven't seen like a viable woman's program out here. And we were talking about this the other day, Marcy, just the other day. There's no one running a good woman's program out here in Vegas. And that blows my freaking mind. Because to me, if a good, a, a good fighter comes in and starts one and does a good curriculum, it's a license to print money, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. I mean, because who wouldn't sign up for that? Marcy, you'd sign up in a second. Yeah. It's, it, there's so much opportunity. And I think a lot of people you know, aren't looking at the opportunity that could still be for them in the fight game just by strategically setting themselves up for, for some local opportunities. It's just, it's all there. But yeah, I mean, self-defense is a huge component for women. And usually it starts with something that's happened to them. Like where you ever attacked, grabbed, stabbed, beat up right. by a chick, beat up by a guy. Usually that's where it stems from. And women are kind of like, okay, they see the dark side of life. Right. And they change. And that, you know, and that's what the whole thing with Anaya just really, <laughs> I, I just hate that that happened to somebody that, you know, I, I'm personally friends with and, you know, know his wife and his, like, I, oh, I just, it just makes me sick. And so it's terrible. with that, it, um, I just want more women to know how to protect themselves. Obviously I can't transfer everything that I've learned over the past 12 years to them, but I can, you know, I have some tips and tricks to keep y'all safe, but. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big advocate of, so the, the largest growing market, especially in concealed carry firearms, is women. No doubt about it. Absolutely zero doubt. Um, based on USC, USCCA, 
USCQ, I think it is, whatever it is, United States Con Concealed Carrier Association, yeah. yeah, USCCA mm -hmm. study. Um, and then, of course, women's hunting and so on and so forth. Uh, but women's self-defense, it hasn't quite, tra it's translated down in the men, Gina, where the men are more complete. Meaning mm -hmm. they're taking blade classes, they're taking gun classes, they're taking jujitsu. Like my reason for doing jujitsu isn't to go and compete in ADCCs or some shit like that. Besides, Nikki would beat me up, but uh, it's more to do uh, practice self defense and just have good practices. And plus, when I go and train with the guys down in South Florida and wherever, jujitsu is a huge component of of the training. So I have to have some. And after I graduated GST in in California, when you know took it uh, Henner's course there, is it's I developed a little bit further understanding of how it could be incorporated into self-defense and I think just putting the curriculum of the right program in place or having a program that gets women acclimated to taking uh, self-defense courses like whether it's like an ease into open mat or easing well, into the practice and stuff like that and it's so funny you said that because you're like you know the men they practice they practice they mm -hmm. practice and with women it's always do the self-defense seminar where you learn it's one, a one day, day it's yeah. a one day thing and they're like yeah and they're inspired and then what next week you forget half the stuff and there's, I think it'd be good to, I want to do like a, you know, like a six month program where you come and see me every Tuesday, yeah. you know, and, and then so, I don't Why don't you do the curriculum and just present it? Yeah, I should do that. I'm kind of, I, I, I have, it. I have something kind of rough drawn up. I'm just. Q and I will come in one day. We'll be the purse snatchers. Oh, we'll, come in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, we'll come in and we'll be like, I know how to, give I'll me that purse. I'll, I'll throw be, some pink donuts to the side. I'll be the angry black guy. In yeah, we'll, we'll just do the purse snatcher component. Like we'll be like, we have some special guest purse snatchers today. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. I'm going to have a fanny pack. Yeah. and like, oh, come on, God. let's that'd go. Be that'd be amazing. I would love that. <laughs> but I think I think you'd kill it. And I've been, I've been talking about this, but just do the curriculum. Stop talking about it. Yeah, for sure. I've got something rough. But yeah, that's where that's where uh, the MMA, where I eventually want to transition. Because one day, obviously, I want to I want to make a baby and like, you know, do, oh. girl, you know, reproduce and do girl stuff. But uh, what is it? I think you need, you need, you guys would know better, Marcy. You know, I think it's like, what, 12, you need a 12-week curriculum and then it recycles. So is it six weeks? Something like that. That's Some that's all it is. That's all, uh, uh, like, when you take a, a, a blue, like, white belt to blue belt, I think that whole, like, basics course is like 12 weeks complete when you finish it and then it recycles. So all you need is like six or 12 weeks. Right. And then you're just repeating it. You're just, yeah. You know, do it Tuesdays and Thursdays or, you know some some cut up like that and you just mm -hmm. lay it out and it's real simple but yeah i mean i'd love to see that around here we were crazy because we were just talking about that the other day and i talked about that with coach the other day you should call him he's on okay. the road to california he's got six hours in the car i know we're gonna meet him there yeah, to ontario right where the fuck he's going who knows he'll be in the car all day <laughs> um but that that would be pretty badass for you, and I think that would be a really good fit, and I think you'd kill it at that. And I, and, you know, just just having that around here. I mean, nobody has it, and it's crazy. Right. So, all that stuff going on, you still have the fight game. So, mm -hmm. where are you going to go from here, and what are you going to do? Well, because I've heard all kinds of rumblings. I want you to set the record straight on what you're going to do, and and is it going to be the UFC? Is it going to be something else? Maybe down the line, is it is you going to stay put? You're going to fight another fight in the UFC? You're going to wait around? What are you going to do? I mean, honestly, like I said, I'm a free agent. I fought out my contract. However, I'm still getting tested by USADA. Um, I, so it's kind of like I don't know. And a waiting game takes some time. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, honestly, no there's. Rush. I think a lot of people don't realize that there's so many politics in the MMA game, like people who aren't involved in it. There's just so much politics to it. Um, and so at this point, I'll, I'm kind of just looking for a fight. Um, but in the meantime, helping Tim get ready for his fight. And, yeah, he you had know, a quick turnaround. So. Yeah, so I'm like, so I'm kind of, you know, deep into that. But then I'm also training really hard at the same time. So, mm. um, but honestly, like any fight, like I want to, I want to keep fighting. I love fighting. And I, I really, I, it's just a matter of finding a fight and, um, I had a short notice fight through like two weeks ago and I said I would take, they wanted it at 125 mm. and I said I can make one, I can make 133 <laughs> because it's, you know, I took it, I would have been on two, three weeks notice. Um, and the girl still said no. So, and, and I, and I understand, I get it, whatever. But, um, mm. so it's just a matter of being ready and staying ready. And I mean, but like I said, I've never, I've never said no to an opponent. So it's just, no. And, I and mean, you know, it's, I think that's the way to be. I don't, I think you should be strategic, but at the same time, I think when you're hungry and you want to get out there and you want to keep hitting it, I think it's important to kind of, you know, stay on the grind and, and keep your face out there. But the reality is you have to choose the right opportunities too, not any at Absolutely. certain points. Yeah. But I mean, you have time. I mean, time's on your side. It's okay every now and then to take a half a year, take six months, 
take some time and train, you know, like a lot of my, my friends in bodybuilding as a, you know, when I was younger, that, that came up, the biggest thing a lot of them get criticized for is they never took time to let their bodies mature and to grow. And sometimes people take six, eight months off and you develop your craft even more. And then when you come back in the game, you're, you're 10 times better. So that's crazy. Cause that's totally a thing. What you're saying, mm -hmm. like it's a hundred percent a thing. Cause I've, I've noticed in the past six months, like my game has just excelled. I've mm -hmm. just been hitting a hard, um, with honestly with coach Casey and you know, all of our, all the, all the people we have around us. And, um, I feel like Mike, and because when you have a fight in mind, you're kind of borderline always focusing on that one person yeah. that you're fighting, what they do. Um, this is the first time where I'm able actually to focus on like what I'm going to do or what I'm doing. Um, and it becomes a chase, like you're chasing it. So yeah. you've got to kind of break the cycle sometimes and take a little time. You've it's three or six months and you've got a holiday coming up. So it's a good excuse to be like, you know, let's 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 reboot this and it's, revisit it a little bit later. It's so hard, though, because I'm like I'm the kind of and it's funny because having Tim see it. But I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I always have to have something going on. Like I'm very I'm all I, I've been working since I was 15, like a real like a job. And so this the first time I ever got to quit that job was about two years ago. Um you know, when I, when I was just hundred percent pursuing fighting and I've been trying to cruise with it since then, but it's just, it's, it's a lot for me to be like, okay, Gina, chill. Why don't you take like a bouncing job? <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to, I used to work security. Security. At like, <laughs> I did. At the bar. Like I, when I was in a uh, Seattle, I worked at what, uh, it's called the show box. It's like a pretty big concert venue, but yeah, I didn't do, I didn't do anything. I, I was surrounded by giant dudes who would just take care of me, but I was security. You know, what's interesting. <laughs> I see a trend too coming. Um, I was talking about this last night with, with, with Nikki Rod and, um, Nikki, you know, is, is doing these super fights and these Polaris and all these different things. And Luke Rockhold took a step back to go do a Polaris. Not a step back, but you know what I mean. He's not yeah. doing the cage. And I see a, a, a trend both ways. You know, guys are making money now doing just the jujitsu super fights and things like that. And Luke is kind of transitioning because, I, I mean, Luke's a legitimate model. I don't think he wants to get punched in the face all the time. And there's the, rightfully so. And he still wants to get paid and still wants to be in the fight game. You think there's something to be said about maybe not necessarily getting in the cage and maybe taking like a super fight or something or just doing something to stay out there to kind of say, you know what, let me do this or let me try, you know, something else as opposed to just getting in the cage and pounding your, pounding right. your head. Right. Yeah. I think those super fights are great. Um, I think anything that you can do that keeps you competing is so important. A few of that is what you want to be good at is competing it's, um, i just don't know what money i know gordon's making money and i know i know nikki's starting to make some money and i know luke had a good deal i mean i don't know what the money game is in that i just don't i don't know it's gotta be worth your while too that's the thing that's crazy about this whole um mixed martial art game is there is really no money in it unless you're smart unless you get i mean great i'm so grateful that i made it to the uc because now i have that title which you know which it really it's 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 just a label like there's tons of amazing fighters out in like you know and and Bellator and uh, World Series and Risen and won. Like there's so many other good fighters, but the thing is for some reason UFC has such a good label on it and I'm super grateful for that. For that. So I'm always gonna be like, oh, Gina Mazzano, UFC vet. And so that's just another thing on my resume, but it, it's, it's insane because there's so many other good fighters out there. In the self-defense game, I mean, I would think you'd make more money teaching like a really well thought out women's program for self-defense and a women's course. And there's just not a lot of those around here. Over time, you'd build probably a better business model as opposed to taking five and fives or ten and tens and right. stuff like that. I mean, I, I think it's just my theory, and I was talking to Eddie B about this. I think there's there's money when you start to get into that 25 and 25, mm -hmm. 50 and 50 space. But that's rare air. Like Eddie even said, he goes, not, not a ton of guys are making that. For the most part, a lot of guys are just grinding it out. But I think if you did a women's self-defense program, that would be... That yeah, would be steady the, the steady income. You know, that would be the ticket for yeah. sure. For yeah, sure. for sure. And it's funny, too. A lot of times when we uh, with fights and whatnot and the money that we make, a lot of people forget, like we had to pay like I pay 10 percent to my coaches. Some people have to pay 10 percent to their gym, 10 or 20 percent to their manager. Um, oh, you got to pay everybody. You got to pay everybody. Oh, not to mention taxes. Heck. Yeah, you got to pay oh. everybody. So talk to me, too, about Alaska. So you grew oh. up in Alaska. Yes, I love that place. It's beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful. How did you end up in Alaska? Um, so my parents moved there. My mom moved from New Mexico. My dad moved from Michigan. Were they like oil czars or something? My mom went there to work on the pipeline and a uh, little gangster. Yeah. She, <laughs> But um, they actually met at this bar called Chilkoot Charlie's, which if anyone's in Alaska, you should go. It's 
it's it's a hoot. Um, but yeah, they met there and lived there and had their three babies and. There was big money in that pipeline. When there they really made, was. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's funny because the kind of money that they made during that time was just in, insane. Um, obviously, like, but being, you know, in your early 20s and making that kind of money, you don't really have too much to show for it, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, of course. But you're building a life, too. But it's beautiful country up there. Uh, God, and it's so great. It's a got to imagine it's got to be a great place to grow up. But is there high crime there? You know, it's it's honestly getting a little bit worse. Um, I think a big issue with uh, with in Alaska is that people get bored. And what do people do when they get bored? They do drugs and party. They do drugs and party. What comes with drugs and partying, fighting and violence? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a chain effect. And that's why I always say when people are like, oh, how's Alaska? I'm like, it's amazing if you love doing outdoor stuff or if you love, you know, hunting and fishing and camping and, you know, being OK with kind of being, you know, maybe a little bo I don't know I, I was never really bored there because if I wasn't on a snow machine or on a snowboard or hunting or fishing I was training you know mm -hmm. and but I've just kind of always been that way if I find an open if I find an open time slot my schedule like I'm gonna fill it with something um but a lot of times people will just be like oh it's boring I'm just gonna sit here and smoke a lot of pot and tons of pot be. now did you hunt and fish at all I did yeah I, I love fishing um Hunting, I, I've shot some stuff, but I'm not like super, I don't know. Not a huntress. Not a huntress, really. I mean, I'm down for it, and I 100% support it, and I love, like, did you, when I moved to Seattle, that was the first time I ever bought beef, because my dad always hunted, so right. we always had, you know, moose and caribou in our freezer, oh. and salmon, and halibut, and, and it was always, like, fresh, and it's so good. Mm. I should have brought you guys some canned salmon. But I you know what, you know what's crazy you bring this up, because I've said this since I've moved here, and I was in Montana before, I so miss Boston and Miami, because the fresh seafood, Dude. I'm always like... The seafood here does not taste, unless you go like to a nice restaurant, the seafood right. here is not like home. It's not like Boston at all. It's not I'm home. such a diva when it comes to seafood. I'm like, be, but it's because like I'm used to going and catching it and then it playing was, it. It was still and it's, alive. Yeah, and eating it. But now it's like, this is a farmed fish and it's been frozen and unfrozen. It's just, it's a mess. It's depressing. It yeah. is. It really is. It's super depressing. But I mean, it's got to be super fun to grow up that way and and just participate in all the outdoor stuff and and you have a little bit of that here you have a good outdoor scene here not For a great sure. one but it's not the same you still have the strip and you have a little bit more it's more of a city atmosphere i would say here than almost anywhere else right um in in you know between arizona and new mexico here you have a little bit more of a city feel i think mm -hmm. in, in vegas but it's got to be fun to just be out here and be in the mecca you know training and participating oh. in this do you think you you'll live out here forever Probably not forever. I definitely want to buy a house out here and just so we have some, sorry, microphone, okay. just so we have something out here just because it's such a growing city. Um, we got season t Raiders tickets, things. And I mean, like there's still a base in, in Vegas. Um, forever home, probably not. I kind of want to live in the middle of the woods one day and have like a farm and chickens and goats and all that fun stuff. Um, that's that's like uh, Rob Bailey. When we had Rob Bailey in here, he's got more chickens. He had a problem with one of his goats actually recently. One of the goats was sick, so that was a little weird. They have all sorts of creatures. Yeah, they so, have all yeah. kinds of creatures. Rob, uh, Rob and Dana were my neighbors up in Montana, so it was really funny. They they have like a whole farm and all kinds of creatures. And then he told that crazy story. Q, remember about being like attacked by Dana, almost being attacked by a puma or something? Yeah. It was bust out the yeah. He almost had to bust out the gat and and take out the whole forest. Yeah. You know what's so funny? You bring up those two is uh when I was so when I after I graduated from uh, graph design school, um, I got a job at this Facebook gaming company. Blah blah. Mm. Um, you know it was like the normal nine to five, four hundred one k benefit, like all that fun stuff. If you're an adult, <laughs> um, but I honestly I when I was working, I'd always listen or read or watch any of Dana and uh, Rob's anything that they had out there, and it was kind of near the beat. This is about. How long ago is this? Maybe like seven years ago. Right. So they were just, you know, they were just they getting cracking. They were just cracking. starting Flag nor Fail and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And like, it was right after Dana won her Miss Olympia and all that kind of fun stuff. And and honestly, like they, like she really motivated me a ton. Like, and I, I there's not. Oh, I'm, Dana's a fucking savage. She's a savage, and I and I really, I, I like. I honestly had she had her first Miss Olympia workout book. I, I it's actually in my glove box. I, I found it when I after I got hit by a car yesterday. Oh my god! Um, but I found it yesterday, and and I just it just kind of it brings me back to like 
when I remember sitting at my desk and like watching their stuff and being like, I can do whatever, you know, if I put my mind to it. And they really, honestly, they, they sent a message and I blame them partially for me moving out here and like being ballsy. And uh, they did, yeah, they were definitely some of my inspiration. Oh my God, I'll have to How, tell, what I'll, a nerd, huh? I'll tell Rob, I'll be like, <laughs> I just had someone in here. She she sold everything and moved to Vegas because of you. And well, it's and I saw him at the PI. <laughs> it was so stupid. I was getting worked on and I was sitting there and then he walked in and he was like, grabbing something and I was like, oh, is that Rob Rob Bailey? And my boyfriend saw me and saw me get all red. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm just, you know. I'm it just, must have been uh, when he did the show. Was it recently? Uh, just had him in. It must have been, yeah. They were, yeah, I think I they were working in. out in there, but. Yeah, I had him in not long ago. He was a few weeks ago, maybe Q, maybe a month ago. I'm not sure what he was in. Yeah, it was about that. Yeah. I borderline fangirl. And I don't fangirl very often, like Yeah, Rob, Rob's a trip. I mean, he he's he um I can't thank him enough. He's he made a point to come out here for a day and turn around and, and spend some time with us and he's That's awesome. he's awesome. He's he's a super motivated guy. And he started out like working at like Costco. Like it's crazy. You know, his story. It's it's absolutely bananas, but they started at such a small thing and like seeing how big like I remember when they were first selling their stuff and they would only we're only going to do send out 100 sweatshirts that are custom this and that. And now there's no way they could do. I mean, it's just like they're so big now. And it's just it's yeah, so cool got, to see the growth. I think they got a piece of that built company, too, with Joey Firestone and, and built a, a drinks we have we have in the studio. But, yeah, he's an awesome guy and a great guy to look up to for motivation. Who else do you look at for motivation? Who else drives you? Um, honestly, um and it's so dirty because I'm friends with her now. Uh, Kat Zingano. <laughs> yeah. She, like, her story is just 100%. Like, she is a gangster, badass chick. Like, all the shit that she went through. Right. And is still, like, making sure that she's an awesome mom and that she's, um, you know, an awesome fighter and just an awesome w female role model. I can... I. I look up to her so much, and every time she's been in town, like we've spent time together. And I'm trying to get her back out here. That's uh, the hard part is getting her out here now because she's kind of settling into to Cali and getting her out back out this way. Because I'd love to get her on. She's she is a badass, and she's one of the originals. You know she's an I mean? OG for sure. Like her, sure. the fight between her and Misha was like is one of my probably one of my favorite fights I've ever seen. It was just such an epic like to these both these girls were just digging deep to fight i love like those are my favorite kind of fights and she's got what three fights with one now i think it's what a three fight deal she's uh she's with bellator, bellator now sorry. yeah bellator. which i which I'm, I'm so grateful for her i'm just so thankful that she's still going because i love watching cats fight she's a she's a special kind of fighter like a lot of people don't know like she she beat uh um amanda oh my gosh 135 champ UFC. Uh, Nunez? Amanda Nunez. Like that fight between them, like that was crazy. The first, I think the first round she wasn't doing very well. The second round she's like came back with a vengeance and I, oh, I just love seeing that. Mm. She's savage. Yeah, she's she's a trip and there's no there's no doubt about it. She's definitely one of the OGs. Who else? Anyone else? Um, Heck. Outside of the UFC maybe. Outside of the UFC. Um, honestly, like my brother was a huge inspiration to me. He did the something, some, he moved out to Vegas. He, he uh he fought and then he he got like his whole face pretty much broken and he fought in Canada so there was no there was no medical uh for him so he went back home to Alaska had luckily one of our buddies was an eye surgeon <laughs> and uh fixed his orbital and he worked and paid off all of his debt and then after that he saved up his money and did the same thing where he moved down to Vegas and I was like wow like he did it I can do it and so he was a a huge inspiration but now he's living the dream working at true fusion and like teaching pretty oh, girls yeah. how to how to lift weights it's I'm, a, I'm sure it's at that place things. of course yeah <laughs> uh, it, it's crazy because we find motivation in, in in crazy places and i never thought you would have said dana and rob but they are two people and i was glad we 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 had rob and i'll have dana in at some point but having them in and, and hearing their story that's part of like one of the driving forces behind this podcast and doing this, I, I wanted to just hear people's story and people that are involved in not just the self-defense community, uh, the MMA community, the action sports community, and people that genuinely get excited to go out and train and participate in training. And you can't find two better people than them. You know, you brought up Kat and someone who's been at it for years. And, and just, it's, it, they show you that 
you can do it over a long period of time if you put your mind to it and you have a good business plan. And I was talking about this with Coach Casey the other day. There's just not enough fighters and people out there that sit down at the end of every year and they say, let me write down my goals for 2020 and let me write down my business plan. Like, like Case was saying the other day, he was like, I just love a fighter that's on the ball and will sit and map out and lay out their plan for the year and will present it to me. It's such a unique thing because that is something that we're not taught. Like a lot of people have to remember that fighters come from like however people end up fighting, wherever they came from, whatever their background is, like maybe they're just tough or maybe they're a really good jiu-jitsu guy, maybe they're a really good boxer. But none of that in that training do they teach you about like signing up for an LLC or doing your taxes or what you're going to do or once you do get, you know, your first UFC paycheck, say you make 12 and 12, that's $24,000 with, you know, the, the 1500 from Reebok, you know, and then, oh, then you got to take this percentage out, this percentage out and you're left with what, like, you know, 15 grand maybe to, sp I, I don't know. And then you're like, then what do you do with that? And then everyone says to invest it, but then really it's 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 such a you don't know how long you'll go between fights 100 yeah. percent. like after my my first one of the ufc i didn't fight again for another nine months and that was just such a uh, that sucked because i was like very motivated to keep going of course i kept training kept going but it's you know like by by the end of it i had you know i had to work at the bar a little bit again mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know because it's just people you, are like oh you make so much money but like really it's it's not you we have to live off of our paycheck so it's it's so hard to be responsible in that sense and if i knew what i know now like 10 years ago i mean it'd be so so i think that's also a program that i wish that the ufc or some fight promotion could adapt to is like educating the fighters on what to do because we a lot of times people don't know like yeah i've talked about this with like matt brown and ben and a bunch of guys i i think the ufc is still very young like we were talking about this the other day the ufc started in 93 it's still a very young organization. It really didn't hit its stride till 2003, 2005, where it started to get its legs underneath it. The PI is still brand new. Mm -hmm. And I think Forrest is trying to get a lot of good programs implemented. I think he's, yeah. he's, he's listening to the fighters and, and, and the role that he plays there. And I think that they will get some things in place, but they definitely should have like the NFL has and other places like a rookie orientation, something that educates the guys. And, and it's just hard because you don't have a huge pool of veterans yet because it's still a relatively newer org where they don't have those things in place. But putting those things in place and making sure that those things are there for the fighters isn't easy. And it's the same in anything. I mean, if you start a self-defense program, like I know tons of shooting instructors and guys on the range, they start a business. There's only so many hours in the day. There's only so much time in the day. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to make money in it. And they're like trying to make money on the range. It's like trying to make money uh, as a fitness instructor. I mean, there's so many, only so many hours in the day, so much right. you can charge people. So you have to have your hand in so many things that will make you money while you sleep and 100 percent. and if you don't have in my opinion at least uh and i've talked about this with cat it sounds like you, if you have to have your hand in at least two or three things that make you money while you're sleeping and it has to be something whether it's a website whether it's like i said this to someone the other day like there's not one woman's website that dedicates itself towards mma gear Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the first woman, I, I talked about this with Kat openly, the, there's the first woman that comes in and actually does a good website, they're going to kill it. Yeah. They're going to absolutely kill it. But it's going to take someone who steps in with that business acumen that you're talking about and, and actually raises the bar. And unfortunately, in the fight game, you have a huge crop of people that are just happy to be there and... They're kind of fighting and they're going through the motions and they're not taking enough time to build a business around it. And that's something Eddie B and I talked about. That's something Casey and I talked about. And there's only so much time in the day. And you can only tell people or give people so much advice because I'm no expert and I, I don't know, but I just kind of, I've sat with enough now to kind of get a feel for it. And I think there's so, it's still so wide open. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, there's... Ugh, there's so much there's just it. so much that could be done and there's just so much in that space now going forward we got ufc 245 coming up tim mm -hmm. has a quick turnaround yep. um where do you what fights do you like coming up i know connor's jumping back in the scene you have john jones scheduled to defend again um amanda nunez actually has her big fight on the 245 card you have a sick, that's a sick card. You have Colby yeah. on that card. You have Matt and, and Ben obviously on that card. And it, it's just, that's going to be one of those cards that's just going to be exciting. Fight in, fight out. Max is on it. I mean, how do you see it all shaking out between now and the end of the year? 
You know, I'm going to be honest. I am a fan of fighting, but I'm not like a huge like UFC fan. Only like the people that I know. Like, obviously, I'm super excited for mm -hmm, Jessica's mm -hmm. fight. Um, she'll be fighting December 14th, I believe. Um, yeah, she's on 245. 245. Yeah, she she messaged me something about donuts. She's uh, <laughs> donuts. Yeah, she's looking to get all whacked out after her weigh-in. So yeah. You know, she. But I think it's just going to be a fun card, and I think that's going to be a really good one. That's going to lead into into Connor, and then you have John Jones. So there's so many cool fights coming up, and I think that's only going to help and enhance what the what the UFC is trying to do. But I'm really excited too to see what ESPN Plus is doing and driving some of these different types of fights like the Polaris fight and like some of the other uh, super fights that we see coming on. And I think it just creates more opportunity for you guys to get out there and try different things, make money, headline things, right. and participate in all these different spaces. It's just going to come down to what you want to do, where you want to do it, and where you want to put your flag in the sand and kind of kind of say, I want to get into this space and I want to make money here and I want to do this and I want to do that. So you have to kind of figure out and weed through the weeds a little bit right. and find your opportunity. But yeah, I, it's there's so much. There's it's so much. It's, it's just, just the it's just politics weird. are just so I don't know because they see me every day at the PI and I always you know I'm like I'm ready if you guys like I'll message Mitch the ma Mick the matchmaker and be like mm -hmm. hey if you guys need a short notice like I'll be ready. Yeah, um, I mean, make wait in two weeks. <laughs> like, do you, are you gonna wait it out? You think, or or after the first of the year, kind of make it start to make a decision or formulate a decision? I mean, I'm ar I'm already talking to uh, my manager and and saying that like hey if there's a fight at 135 like let me know i'm i can make wait in two weeks i'll be ready in two you know like i'm i'm ready i'm just kind of waiting for i'm just waiting for the call which mm. sucks so, and that's the thing that i don't like about fighting is that it's you know people the one question people always ask is like oh when's your next fight and it's we really don't know unfortunately and, it, and it, it's it sucks that we can't like schedule anything you know it's kind of all up in the air and a lot of times like the smaller fight promotions like they'll kind of screw you over quite a bit. So I'm just, uh, I would like to fight as soon as possible, but it's just, sometimes I just have to be patient. And right now I think it's one of those times where I'm like, I just got to be patient, but I'm super grateful because Tim has a fight. And so, like I said, I, I, I put a lot of time in helping with his camp and like, you know, cooking all this food and making sure, you know, he's got all of the stuff he needs so that he can train hard and you know, feel good for his fight. And I love it. I don't mind doing, I love doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, the prep and everything that goes into it, especially when you're trying to make weight, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it helps to have a second person there to kind of go through it with you and someone who's been through it. Understand. Now with Tim's fight coming up, um, you know, at some point we'll get Tim on. Uh, it's got to be exciting. He always kind of, it seems he always has like these quick turnarounds and he's thrown into the mix of everything. Uh, what's his plan and kind of where do you see it going for him? Um, well, with his last fight, he, he blew his knee out about uh, almost two years ago. Um, and so he took a, a long year off with uh, after the surgery and stuff mm. and getting back you know to normal. Um, and he had a scheduled fight to fight Figueroa. And I know there, I don't know, there has been some people kind of talking shit about him having a quick turnaround. And that all really bothers me because it's like, he deserves it. He has over 14 fights in the UFC. Like he's, mm. he's, he's a legend. And he's the, when he first got signed to the UFC, he fought top 10 opponents, his first four fights. And if you watch some of them, a lot of them, I thought he won. And it, it, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's just kind of shitty because he deserves this kind of treatment. He, I, in my opinion, he, he's paved the road for a lot of the guys. And he's, I think he's kept light on the 125 division because if anyone has seen Tim Elliott fight, he's a very exciting fighter. He, he will never have a boring fight. Um, and like sometimes and like his last fight shit happens like if if anybody saw the stats like oh, sure. he was beating his ass and then he got caught and that's just what happens in this game and that's that's the hardest part about it and it, it's it with this game you just you just never know like anything can happen like john jones can get like everyone thinks that john jones is unstoppable or mcgregor like anyone can get clipped anybody anyone can get caught in a submission like we're all insane great athletes and you know that's it, there are no easy fights anymore you know you can always like oh there's a good fight for you but there are no easy fights if it, it just i don't know it's but yeah i'm so excited for his fight and i think this is i honestly do think this is a good one this guy's tough he's undefeated uh, and that's one thing i love about his fights is that he chooses people that people don't want to fight because tim will see the holes in his game you know, it's crazy when I see you both uh, at Open Mat and stuff and, and hanging Choking out. Choking each other. Yeah, you guys have so much fun. <laughs> who who wins in a fight, you or him? Oh, he does. 
He's so good. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm a strong bear and like maybe I could I I like I'll sit down. Him and I are so opposite. We're like I'm like a sit down on my punches and like stand and bang and he's like by that time he's already on my back taking me down. I don't know. He's we're both we're our styles are both so different. Which he likes I to think take over the mat. Like when he when he's an open <laughs> mat, he's like John Travolta in fucking Saturday Night he Fever. Really it's is. like I'm like I ain't rolling. Like this is gonna get crazy. I'll get clipped. But he's he's uh you know he's exciting to watch. I love watching the smaller guys because they're so technical and they're flying around. Watching two big guys, it's like watching two water buffaloes. Cute. You know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's awful. So. Yeah, I mean he's he's super fun to watch and even super fun at open mat, especially with the right opponent. Just seeing him kind of kind of grapple and and move around, he's just so quick and and I love that. I mean I think that's that's high energy. But you guys have so much fun and I I'd, I'd love to see like a, a scrap between the two of you. You know, um, down at the gym we could like make it like an open super fight. Uh, yeah, like a super fight. We could broadcast. I actually joked with Coach about that. I'm like we should do more like in gym super fights and like people should come around and we should we should hang out i mean it is vegas can we gamble on it maybe right. you know can we put some money down on it be fun but i think it would be uh it, it's it's super exciting to live and have someone around you that's going through the same things that you're going through and, and battling the way that you're battling and it, it's easier to have the conversations of like geez i'm just not having a good day or right. you know my my meals are off or i'm not coming in at weight or i just don't feel it's got to make life so much easier Dude, it's so much easier and that's the thing too is like the fight game can be so stressful and so hard and so like honestly emotional because you work like a lot of people don't understand this but have you ever like worked your damn ass off like literally like worked your fucking ass can I cuss? Mm -hmm. Worked your fucking ass off and then not succeed like that happens to fighters half 50% of the time because one person's gotta win one person's gotta lose um oh oh. Q you you sabotaged us. We went in the dark. We had a power bill. <laughs> no. So the, the the lights typically do go off sometimes because we have them set to motion and we were a little too still. I just had to do this every once in a while. Every now and then. So, yeah, no, it's fun. It's just fun watching you guys. And, and you're unique because there's not a lot of, at least I haven't seen a lot of couples around here that are fighters. We had to, like, figure it out, like, how, because Tim's a really good coach, too, but I don't, he has to coach me in a particular way mm. because it's kind of, it's easy to, you know, to be like, don't tell me what to do, and you know. Well, um, no wife listens to the husband, and no husband listens to the wife. Or well, no because I'm always husband. right. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's brutal. Like you could tell your girlfriend the sky's blue, and if you're the boyfriend, you're wrong. Oh yeah. It's no matter what, you'll almost never win. So it's it's one of those things. But you know, you guys have a lot of fun, and you can genuinely see that in everything you do. I mean, I've never ne- not seen either of you really with a smile. So that's that tells me a lot about. A relationship and just seeing how fun you guys are around each other and and enjoying the open map but i'm looking forward to everything and i'm looking forward to everything you guys have going on yeah. and coming up and the decisions you make coming up and i know you're being a little cute about it but you are waiting for for the next fight and where that's going to go but um i think the phone will be ringing soon and I, if it's not ringing already and i know you're kind of being a little sheepish about it because you don't know where it'll go and that's right. that's that's good that's okay there's nothing wrong with that it gives you time to train time to refocus and time to get your arms around things and especially your business and what you want to do in 2020 but i definitely think you should do something like a women's program because i think a coach would jump all over that immediately Absolutely. and i think that's something you can get a lot of steam behind very very easily i genuinely mean that gina i think you'd murder it with that and it'd be exciting to see around here because nobody's doing it i'm just like i'm just so much more motivated to do something if I know it's going to help somebody or make someone happier. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I really, I, I kind of hated working at the bar in the sense that like, I hated that I was uh, contributing to people's like bad habits and like wanted them to come in for their bad or maybe good oh. habits. I don't know. But like, I, but like having someone, having someone like exercise or like learn something that that's going to better their life in the future. is just such, so much more of a motivator to me. There's and, nothing wrong with the booze. Oh, there's no, there's nothing wrong with the booze. I mean, hell you go. Yeah, if somebody <laughs> wa- somebody wants to go out and get all lubed up and and put some tips in your pocket, there's nothing wrong with that. Go no, for money. sure. But but I just like being I you know after I leave the bar, I would go and you know go train and stuff, and it's just it's just such a different. Uh, diff- I don't know. I it's it's a it's weird. I love working at the bar because I love talking to people and getting to know people. But there's just something special about like helping someone like improve their life. Because when people come to the bar, I'm like, man, I don't know why I'm just like so fat and I'm sad and. 
like, well, put down the cheeseburger and yeah. There's definitely a depressing. <laughs> like, there's definitely a depressing component to to regular trips to the bar room. I mean, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, I don't drink and I don't party, but I'm also the lamest guy in the room. But it, it's I'm just that way. But it, you know, if you can find a way to get from A to B to put the puzzle pieces together to pursue your dream, which is what you're doing, that's everything. And if you can do things that don't feel like work and they still make you money, that's living the dream, right? Right. So, well, it's when you're talking or you mentioned earlier, I was going to say this um, about with uh, Tim and I, one thing that we've been getting, I mean, because there's more of a motivation to like, you know, be secure with our family. And it's not, it's not like fighting when we're in our early twenties, we're like, Oh, fuck it. Like, you know, I'll fight any, it, it's, we have, you know, Tim has a four year old and you know, she's with us most of, most of the time. So like that having a stable family is important. But what I was gonna say is win or lose, I want us to enjoy the process. And I feel like so many people find themselves so miserable in the process of getting ready for a fight where they're like running on the treadmill four miles a day every day and like eating boring food every day like i enjoy not living their best life not living their best life and the thing is like through this process because there's a good chance you could do everything that they say by the book and do like you know eat your your fucking chicken and your plastic thing and you know have it taste crappy and then run and have i, I don't know but like at least enjoy the process and that's one thing um, especially with Tim's turn a quick turnaround is that I want us to enjoy the process and it's going to be hard and it's always hard. But in the meantime, like I'm going to make it as enjoyable as possible because why in the hell we do this and, and live in the moment, live yeah. in the moment. Absolutely. And live in the moment and enjoy it for what it is. And, and that's all you can do because you never know what's going to happen because you're, uh, living proof that living in the moment is important because just the other day you were almost T-boned, oh, you yeah. know, I mean, I got I got a call and and Gina was in a, a car accident and I was like, well, you don't have to come in, but she still made it here. I'm here, she still made it here. You know, <laughs> we have one car now. <laughs> one, they're down to one car. How will they survive? Oh. You know, some somewhere there's like a, a a family that would kill to have one car. But right, here, here Isn't we are that in crazy? America. One First car. world problems for real. Yeah, exactly. It's such shit. So, <laughs> like... I am pumped that you came in. I'm excited. I'm grateful that you guys had me on here. Yeah, this is awesome. And catching up with you and kind of seeing where things go because I know you were kind of figuring it out and seeing what you had going on and kind of figuring out what the next steps were. So it's super fun to have you down here and have you spend some time with us and catch up and just kind of see where things go with you. Uh, I want to at some point I want to have you back on when you get things rolling into into the next Absolutely. direction and especially when you start a women's program because Absolutely. I think that's going to be something to talk about. Need so purse snatchers. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Q and I are down one and two for purse snatchers, for sure. Um, I'm in. But I definitely want to thank you for coming out. Thank you. I want to let everyone know where they can find you and look you up, whether it's IG, YouTube, whatever you're pushing, and uh, thank any sponsors. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Gina Danger AK. There she is. Um, <laughs> point nine. Um, and then uh, thank you to my sponsors. On it has been an awesome. Uh, oh, they're great. Yeah, awesome supplement company. Uh, they're so great. They've they've been so good to me. They've had me since before I got signed to the UFC. Um, and then also thank you to Laura's Lean. Um, they send me awesome, delicious antibiotic free meat mm. which is very important to me um oh gosh who else i'm so bad at this um laura's lean on it um the gym <laughs> the gym extreme couture 10th planet yeah. um all the above <laughs> and how can people reach you if they have any questions what's the best way uh hit me at, slide in my dms on the instagram sliding into the slide. dm where all the creepers lie mm, they do it's oh. real What's the creepiest DM you ever got? You uh, it's have. always about feet. And the thing I hate about the feet thing <laughs> oh, is like my damn, feet are busted. Feet. I grew up figure skating and doing ballet and like my toes are broken and I've had multiple surgeries on my feet. Like my feet are so ugly. Why don't people hit me up for my feet? Uh, there's what, actually, the you might be on there. Story? Come Seriously. On. What's single the single craziest, craziest story? Oh, God. Give us one. <laughs> we ask every Come female on. this. Give us a crazy Come DM. On. I'm trying to think. Um, Dirty underwear. For sure. Honestly, recently, <laughs> I tried to sell my shin pads and it got too weird. Like I had these old shin pads that were just stinky and sweaty. But that's a thing. Um, when I was working at the bar, I uh, we had porn star karaoke. So a lot of the 
porn star uh, and like fetish community would come in and like drink and and they're all like normal people, whatever. Um, what bar was this again? Uh, Paradise <laughs> Pub. Paradise <laughs> Pub. They're great. Uh, I, I, that's like that bar kind of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the porn star karaoke isn't there anymore, but you can Google them. Oh, uh, Q, Q just canceled this whole weekend. <laughs> but they're still there. Um, but I had, I was wearing, you know, those Tom shoes. Yeah, yeah. And I don't wear socks with them. Those were specifically my bar shoes, so I'd wear them, sweating them, so booze on them. They were like disgusting. Um, and then there is a foot fetish fellow there, and he offered me two fifty for my shoes. Sold. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so. Was it Q? Was it Taylor that the guy said he wanted to he, he wanted her to pee on him? Oh. Um, was it, I think that was somebody else. I think Taylor was the she want he wanted to sniff her armpits after she worked out. Oh yeah, like, there's uh, they're like, oh, can I smell your armpits feet? Armpits and mail it to Armpits, him. yeah, that's just, it's so weird. And then like, I had one girl your, that got jail mail. I was like, what? They'll send. Uh, um, I've had requests to like work out and and send my dirty socks. Um, obviously, you dirty take underwear. That money. Oh God, it's just so. I don't know. And you know, and I should. I really should. You <laughs> I should. should jump on this opportunity. My Crazy. stinky feet. <laughs> yeah. So weird. It's the you absolutely. Take the, have that you heard of a uh, wiki feet? Fuck is wiki feet. Oh my God, Google that. Oh no, if you God. know, <laughs> there's a. It's Ooh. literally a site of like foot fetish of um, famous people or people who are in the light i guess um i think I my get in it i'm locked out my computer just melted oh you're missing it's out it's all rory it's porn yeah, they're it's blocked, porn. They're blocked. <laughs> um but it's wiki feet and like oh my god it's real but i am blocked like i can't get in it's totally blocked. Yeah, it's like a thing oh well it's a thing um but my feet are rated three and a half stars how embarrassing that's amazing <laughs> but they're so ugly i don't know so um yeah, there's so much foot fetish out there. I'm waiting for someone to say like they wanted like a chunk of my hair cue. Like I don't know what I would offer anyone like a bit muffin. <laughs> a bit muffin? What's a bit muffin? <laughs> like like I I bite a muffin and mail it to them or a donut. Oh, like, I don't know what some want. Like like a half eaten freaking cereal bowl or something. I don't know. I have to think of something. Send it in a Tupperware. Uh, I, you know some type of campaign, but yeah. The DM thing with, with with chicks is out of control. It's it's funny. We ask everyone this, and we get all kinds of crazy answers. I'll get like weird stuff. Where I had this one guy for a while, and he would uh, it <laughs> for was a while. Q, Q, <laughs> she was stringing her, stringing him along. I He's just, like, I got I, yeah, I just yeah, hang out in the DM. I totally forgot about this one. He would like hate. You know how you have like your normal DMs, and you have like the blacklist DMs, where like who are these people? Um, that in that section, this fellow would uh, he kept going. Just randomly message me pictures of him with his shirt off. It was like just got done I'm, with the workout, I'm, I'm, and he yeah. was like on the heavier side, and he'd be like, just got done with my he workout. Was like, you ever seen anything? Like, he looked like you. You ever seen anything like this before, <laughs> yeah. honey? And then like doing from the side, like lo losing a lot of weight. But I, I would never respond to him. But he probably sent me like six or seven pictures, and it was just like weird, creepy, sweaty. Like you ever let Tim go in and answer? No, I mean Tim is the best. Like answering to I don't know if you ever. Pay, pay attention someday on like the shit like the shit he talks on the yeah, interwebs yeah. like he's so good at dealing with um like haters and, I, like, I do this i do the secretary well cc see, see, i'm not the only on my social media i have other people on it but like i i i try to like just i i don't i don't have the time it's just the bandwidth to go through everything but yeah it's funny because you, you got to be careful man there's stalkers out there and that's one of the things that uh Cat has been talking to me about that's why she's so like nuts about self defense and taking care of herself because there's real crazies out there. She has legit stalkers. Straight yeah, up. I've heard uh, it's awful. Yeah. I had one um, actually at my at my that came to my. That's actually why I initially stopped working at the bar because he found me at the bar uh. and he. He was like, "Give me them shoes, honey." <laughs> he came. He was a big guy too, and he came in and 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 like threatened me and said that he wanted to beat the shit out of. And mind you, he could. He was a six foot three grown man, and there's no reason why he couldn't just. I mean, I'm 150 pounds, five foot six on a good day. Um, he was like, "Honey, give me your dirty drawers." Right? <laughs> no, but he was. He threat. He wanted to like. He told me he's like, "I want to. I want to beat the shit out of you." Blah blah blah. And I like called. Is that the, a fet? Is that a thing? That's, that's like a, a thing. That's yeah. like a real fetish. Is like, be. I mean, being a, like dominant type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the the fucked up thing is like I wasn't able to do anything about it. Like I I was I kept getting like I had to block. I have it's still on my phone. Like I have like seven or eight numbers that he erased and like kept calling and kept. Uh, and actually one day I was like, all right, fine, come to my gym. Blah blah blah. Like I'll be here at this time. And then you have a hit squad, a pipe hit as well. I going. did. I did. Yeah. I I roll I roll in the gym all panicky and I was like. I was like, hey guys, this is happening. Like, told my coaches, my buddy Justin James. I was like, did he show? He didn't show. 
which was super annoying. And then he kept harassing me and then eventually it died down. Um, but he, it, it was just, it just sucks. It's just such an uncomfortable thing. And I'm like, I don't make enough money for, to be dealing with this shit. Like, I don't, like, this is, this sucks. Like, like leave me, like harass, I don't know, harass somebody who can actually get some protection or harass somebody that someone would actually care. Like, cause I called the cops and they couldn't do shit. And I understand like it is what it is, but I was, I was genuinely th- threatened for my life. Like I, I hated walking to my car. I, I will give you a 100% foolproof method. The next time someone slides into the DM and they're like, Hey baby, what are you doing? You send them a picture of Q and they'll never slide in the DM. <laughs> <again>. <laughs> With donut sprinkles. Yeah, you, you, send them, you send them a picture of Q or like, like a, like a, like a bowl of a uh, toilet bowl full of shit or something. You know oh, what hell. I mean? Oh hell. That'd be fucking nuts. But there are a lot of weirdos that weirdos out there. Of course there uh, are. There's just, we digress. CCW. Oh, it's amazing. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, we've gone an hour. It's so much. Power hour. Power hour. I loved having you on. This is so much fun. So we got to go eat Jesse Ray's. We got to do a few things around here, but I loved having you on. Yeah, it was great having me. A lot of fun. Thanks. So much fun. So slide into her DM, but slide inappropriate. Uh, she is <laughs> going to be selling the laundered clothing. So uh, hit her up for prices. Socks. We'll keep it clean. Socks, <laughs> old shirts. Sports bras, maybe. Used shoes. Oh. Used shoes. Used shoes, yeah, Shin shoes. Guards. Let's do shoes. Sh- sports Shin bras, yeah. We're going we're gonna to start the bidding at 200 bucks. so everyone out there that's interested, slide into the DM. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On another note, I want to thank everyone. Thank everyone at KVAR. I want to thank Q. I want to thank Rory. I want to thank Marcy. And, of course, the one and only Gina Dane. <gasps> thank you, guys. So I appreciate it. Q, 